Welcome, everyone, to the inaugural FGA Report. This is Brian Smith with Inside the Knights on Fan Nation, powered by Sports Illustrated. And this report is going to be dedicated to the states of Florida, Georgia, and Alabama, thus FGA. Chronicling high school football in these three states, talking some football recruiting with the colleges in these three states, as well as the schools that come in here and recruit them, Ohio State, UCLA, you name it. We're going to talk about it. I'm going to put out two or three of these reports a week. That's kind of the early line on what I'm going to do. In today's edition, it's going to feature defensive linemen in the class of 2023 that I have seen live in pads, meaning not just an Under Armour prospect, but a kid that I've seen at a high school football game where they're beating on each other pretty good. So with that, here is the first report. I'm going to talk about five kids that are going to play, in my opinion, three tech or one tech at the college football level. So without further ado, the first player is Stantavia Smith, 6'1", 260, 265 in that range. He's at Doherty High School in Albany, Georgia, just the central part of the state. Really good kid. I saw him in a game at about midseason. And, oh, excuse me, uh, in the playoff in the city of Savannah, actually. Uh, traveling through there, had a chance to see him play, and he could move really well. I was impressed with him, and I was surprised at how well he could move and hit a gap. He's not the kid that has got the, the super height and all that that some coaches want, but he's a pure interior guy, and his quickness and strength is going to allow him to play at the Power 5 level. I don't think he'll have any problem ending up with several offers in the SEC, ACC, etc. He already has some, but he's, he's a player to watch. And, and the thing about Mr. Stantavia Smith is he has the ability to play as a one gap or possibly even as a two gap player, depending on how much bigger he gets. He's got another year of high school. Let's see. He needs to redefine his body a little bit. So be it. The other aspect of him is he just likes football. Just, just the way he practiced. I'm just kind of thinking back to it now before the game, the way he took it seriously, their D line coach gets into it and all that at Doherty, but they did a nice job with him playing one gap and getting upfield. They were playing against an option team from Savannah that wasn't all that great, but that, you know, anytime you play a wing T team, D linemen can get changed around into different spots and mentally get out of it and be confused. They did a nice job overall, and Smith was a big part of the reason why. he They couldn't block him with just one guy. So at 260 or so, I think he's a player that's going to do quite well. Again, these are all class of 23 players, but Smith, I think, is the guy that has the most upside from this group in terms of his body just getting bigger. He's the smallest of this group. Next up is a player that his size is not going to be a concern, and that is Peter Woods. He plays at Thompson High School in Alabaster, Alabama, just outside the city of Birmingham. They just won the 7A state championship over Central High School in Phoenix City. I was at that game recently, and Woods has offers from pretty much everybody already. First off, let me start with, with that, that point. He's 6'3", 6'4", 280, 290, somewhere in that vicinity. Maybe he's a little bigger. I don't know. But the most important thing is he's in your opponent's backfield. If you're a coach, that's what you want. I got a little bit lucky when I was at the state championship game. I just picked. I said, okay, the next few plays, I'm just going to watch Peter play. Now I'm going to film it. Sometimes you get lucky and, and it just goes in your, your favor. And this would be the next three plays. He penetrates, gets inside the offensive tackle, playing defensive end. And even though he's a kid that's only a junior in high school at 280 plus, he's playing DN. That's also something to note. He gets inside, unable to make it to the quarterback, hands up, deflection. Next play, arguably the most impressive of the three, playing the same left defensive end spot, comes across the face of the tackle again, gets past the guard as well, into the A-gap, and makes the tackle at the line of scrimmage on an inside zone play. And then the third play, he's playing on the other side. It's an obvious passing down. It's third nine. Right before the quarterback releases it, Woods has his hand out. He's getting ready to make contact with the quarterback. He doesn't have the ability to throw the football down the field with true maximum velocity. It's incomplete. Fourth down. 
Thompson holds. All three plays, he either literally made the play with the deflection or the tackle, or he changed the play with the pass rush. The most important thing about what he's done so far, besides just be big, fast, and strong, I mean, he he is just an athlete. He uses his hands very well. little hand swipe. He's got the ability to use swim. He has the ability to bull rock. His bull rush is nasty. Super strong kid. There's a reason that Woods has offers in programs like Alabama. He can play in a two-gap scheme or a one-gap. It would not matter. He is going to play early at the school of his choice. So national recruit, national top 25 kid, Peter Woods, Alabaster, Alabama, Thompson High School. The next kid is almost an exact clone of Woods, maybe a shade bigger. And that is a kid that I know extremely well, and that would be John Walker, Kissimmee, Florida, Osceola High School. It's just south of Orlando, Walker, even though he was on the losing team his sophomore year, was the most dominant player for his team in the state title game. And he blew up the offensive guard a couple of times in that game so bad it was just like you could use this in a clinic. First step explosion, stayed low, hands to the middle of the chest, redirected, stab, veered off, found the ball carrier, made the play in the backfield. It's Howie Long kind of stuff, you know, J.J. Watt kind of stuff. Guys that are going to, you know, get that yellow jacket stuff going on. Walker has the ability as a three tech to do something else that is very, very difficult to explain to somebody because there's not a lot of space. You got to watch quite a bit of film and he can pass rush again. His hands like with Stantavius, his hands like with Peter are very good. And that's the difference between these guys and most of the other kids that I've seen. They use their hands well enough to knock down the offensive lineman and get into the backfield. They may or may not make a sack, but they change the play. And sometimes it's even better if they don't get the sack because the quarterback throws it up ill-advised and it goes the other direction. Walker can get into the backfield, and if you do not double-team him, it's going to be a problem at some point. He's going to hit your quarterback. You don't need 295 coming downhill at you, and his footsteps are rather heavy. So in my opinion, he's the best D-tackle in the state of Florida in 23, although there's another kid that's close. And it's just because of his technique. He's a kid that has the ability to really move, to really get going, and he can change direction. He can get into the backfield, break down, move right or move left, and find the ball carrier. Walker is another national recruit. Flat out pick his school. It doesn't matter. Staying in the state of Florida, Jordan Big Baby Hall, Westside High School, Jacksonville, Florida. Saw him play in the kickoff classic against Fleming Island, and he was one of those kids that he is a mentality-wise. He is a one-gap, get-up-the-field, let's-go guy, but he's he's 300 pounds. He could could two-gap in terms of his strength and athleticism, but his mentality, he is a one-gap guy. He is a one-gap guy. He loves playing upfield. He's a very vibrant, outspoken kid. He loves just woofing it up and, and talking. Not really to anybody, Just he just likes to talk in general while he's out on the field. He, it was pretty interesting being on the sidelines. But Big Baby is another national recruit. I mean, you know, He could go to Michigan or Florida or wherever. He'd be just fine. He's got several offers already. And I would estimate him at about 6'4", 305. That was right before the season, just give or take. Pure inside player, but he has the athleticism and the shake to play some strong side defensive end. He's a little more raw technique-wise in some regards. He uses his hands pretty well, but he needs to be a little more consistent with it to thwart offensive linemen. But his first step is just fantastic. For a kid his size to move like he does, that is not a normal thing. I would imagine that his best attribute would be just hitting the gap, getting the shoulder low, bending and extending through the offensive lineman and just trying to get sideways and get through a double team or or just split. Because once a defensive lineman that big reaches the backfield, it's going to cause havoc. No question. It's going to cause havoc. And the other aspect of it, you also have to remember that when somebody that big gets in there, just like with the other kids, like with Woods, just like with Stantavia Smith, 
anybody else. It's not fun to get hit by somebody like that. So the quarterback will oftentimes throw it up. It is bad business to throw the ball up randomly if you're a quarterback, but that's what defensive linemen get paid so much money for at the NFL level. Trying to create turnover. Sometimes you don't have to hit the guy to do the best job. Hall can do that. He's going to be one of the rare guys that can rush the passer as an interior guy and do so in a way that is just about athleticism. His technique needs to improve, don't get me wrong, but athletically, no problems. Finally, I'm going to start and I'm going to end in the state of Georgia. Stantavia Smith was first from Albany, Georgia. Another one not that far away, to be really honest with you, is going to conclude this five-man list, and that is Vic Burley on two-time defending 5A state champion in the state of Georgia, Warner Robins Red Devils, and saw him play at Under Armour. Uh, Great kid. He got after it. I could tell he was a player. But then when I saw him play against Ware County this year, he was one of the kids that could really do some things against a very good running back who's going to play college football at Iowa State. And he was also able to slow down one of the most athletic quarterbacks I've ever seen in Thomas Castellanos. Castellanos was the best player on the field that night, but there were a few plays where Burley at 280, 285 hemmed him in. And either Castellanos went down because he didn't want to get hit by him or he, he wrapped him up. Burley is 6'4", 280, give or take. And he can play strong side end or tackle. I think he's better off in a 4-3 playing tackle. But again, he could do some different things if you wanted to run a 3-3-5 and run him in a one gap, kind of like Cincinnati does with their defensive scheme. That would work very well. He's strong enough to two gap and and like Kirby Smart's Georgia scheme, whatever you want to do. But he's a yes, sir, no, sir, young man. And above all else, he just finds the ball. When I was interviewing Castellanos the other day, I just randomly asked him during the interview, who's the best player you went up against? He thought about it for a second, and he goes, oh, yeah, Vic Burley. He said, I could throw the ball down the field, and you'll look up, and Vic will be there. He goes, he just finds a way to get to the football. He's not your average defensive lineman. And I'm like, yeah, I, I get it. I was there that night. <laughs> he he was pretty special. So it's one of those deals where – Sometimes guys just have gifts athletically. Burley does. He just does it with a yes, sir, no, sir attitude. Very unassuming, very quiet. He's not going to be the guy that's going to be hooting and hollering, but he'll be on top of your quarterback at some point at the end of the night. So anyway, I'm going to conclude the report in itself with that. Those five players, Dantavia Smith, Peter Woods, John Walker, Vic Burley, and Jordan Hall. All those guys are going to have great, great opportunities for college football, and all three of them are going to play D-tackle, in my opinion. opinion. But here's the other other thing I want to talk just a little bit about the report itself. I created a Facebook page, FGA report. It's going to be talking about Florida, Georgia, and Alabama high school football. Primarily, that's what it's about. A little bit about recruiting kind of from both perspectives. The kid going to the college, the college coming after the kid recruiting and how it all works. Going to talk a lot about the games that will come up. Spring football is not that far away. Seven on seven, constantly going to have seven on seven information on there. Interviews with recruits. And since I work under the Sports Illustrated umbrella, the Tennessee side, SI99, coming from SI All-American and John Garcia, some of the kids on that list are top 99 players in the country. They'll be on there. Uh, blogs in regards to player updates and what's going on with their recruitment. Garcia does a bunch of that stuff. I'll throw some of those on there. But anybody that's recruited in this state, there's a chance that you'll see them on the Facebook page. And then I'm also going to use this on my YouTube page, Florida Football Scout. If you just go on to YouTube and type in Florida Football Scout, you'll find it. Like and subscribe. This is going to be on there. This is the very first one, but it's going to be on there. So Keep in mind, these are going to be fun. They're going to be just kind of looking at football from a different perspective on some of them. This is just an evaluation, the one I did today. But overall, it's going to be a kind of a celebration of just how good football really is at the high school level in Florida, Georgia, and Alabama. It's tremendous. I enjoy scouting it, Um, planning to move up into the Panhandle or Mobile area to cover some of that over the next six months to 12 months, just to get a different perspective and travel a little bit differently. They even hit some schools in New Orleans and Mississippi just to see some of that too. But it's all the same basic principle. Football in these areas means a lot. The town's more or less shut down and it's a blast to cover it. 
Ware County, Kissimmee, Osceola, doesn't matter where you're at. There's a good player somewhere, and I'm going to scout them. It's what I like to do, and this is going to be a lot of fun. So with that, I appreciate everybody listening. Be looking for more of these coming up. Everybody have a great evening.